It's December, time for a new theme on the podcast. And today we're talking about your path in 2021. And we're headed back to Sequoia National Park on Wanderings Inn, all on today's Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you have reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 145. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, what do we got going on? Well, in the month of December, we are going to revisit stuff that we've had since I think 2017. Yep, long time. 2017. We built something called My Path 2017, which of course it's now 2021. So that would make it four years old. That's right. And it was it was basically the brainstorm of I like I've always been trying to find like the perfect way to jot down uh, things for your day, your week. Uh, Everybody has a thing that they like, and so we designed something. We put a bunch of things in here that are not just around business planning because we already did so much business planning. This is more about organizing your life, your your personal goals and projects, as well as your some things with your business that may help you with subtracting some of your business goals and, and so on. But it's a, it's a mixture. Let's just call it a mixture of making sure you're doing everything. You're well balanced. Okay? What I love about this, Jen, to that very point is when we do business planning, we always talk about adding your personal goals in there and making sure that you're carving out time for yourself. But I would probably guess a good 90% of the people don't add that component in. This actually makes you, forces you to talk about the you time and the family time that you need in order to thrive and stay balanced in your life. So I love my path. That's the theme for December. You know, we just did business planning. We went in and and, and covered, in November, it was about gratitude and ways to connect with your clients. And so we I feel like December is a good month to bring all that together. If you haven't been doing your business plan, you still have time to make that happen. But this is more about taking a wholeness approach to everything to set yourself up for the new year. So we have a couple other topics coming up this month that are going to be on how to restore and kind of retool and reorganize yourself just on, a, on all that level, not just business, because we're always talking business here, right? So right. this month is more about mindset and your your inner and your outer self uh we're going to cover uh setting intentions and maybe coming up with a mantra or a key thing for the year which is another fun thing to do like what's your focus for 2021 we're going to cover that and then matt and i are going to talk a little bit about um our take on 2021 (laughs) the year in review our year our take on 2020 uh 2020 sorry yes our year in review for 2020 for uh which has been Let's just face it, a milestone year for everyone, but we are going to obviously talk about the couple big things that happened in this year, but also other things that happened that maybe you forgot about. I like to do this. I've been doing this on my channelbrian.com blog for years, just kind of for me as a bit of a diary of like going back and seeing what was happening in 2008 and 2009. It's the best data dump ever, right? Right? So that's what we're going to focus on and bring us into 2021. And then we've got great stuff happening, right? We're gonna we're we're really we're retooling WBNL podcast. We got a lot of irons in the fire right now. We sure do. A lot more video, a lot more live. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, let's talk about that. We you know we've launched it a couple weeks ago, but we're going live on Facebook on our private Facebook group uh, twice a week. Mondays uh, we will uh, kind of continue on from our podcast and dive a little deeper into the tip. Uh, or another coaching tip that's going on. Then every Wednesday, we're covering uh, Canva, a great marketing tool that is available to anyone for free or for a very small charge if you want to go to the pro version. Uh, Tip on that every week on Wednesday. So uh, some live instruction, which will also be taped, obviously, and stored right in our Facebook group. But in order to get to all that great information, you have to actually join our Facebook group. So at that bottom of the screen here is the, uh, the path to get there. If you are listening on the audio, 
just go to Facebook and type in the Wanderers Club and ask to be invited into the group. And we'll be more than happy to have you in there. Going to be a lot of great information along with other stuff beyond just the video training that's in there. So and good stuff. Got our, we've got our good friend Cosmo Moravi, who uh, works with me on our team here and is starting to do some coaching and some lead generation courses that he's got coming up soon. He's going to be part of that as well. He's going to start doing, giving you guys tips on uh, live and Facebook from our group um, from time to time on everything that he's he knows and shares on how to get ads and how to do ads, how to generate, how to do social media better and how to generate leads from social media is the best way to say that. Yeah, and just uh, this past Wednesday, uh, Jan presented her Plan, Pivot, Prosper presentation. That's a lot of Ps. That's an alliteration gone crazy. Uh, uh, and that is now uh, uh, archived on the Facebook group as well. It's a little over two hour presentation talking about business planning, but really business planning with a twist. It's more on the mechanics of the tools and, and things you need to do to actually succeed in the business, not just to write down a bunch of numbers that you're not gonna ever look at again and hit. So it's a great, great, great uh, presentation. We've done it several times across the country on different uh, uh, Zooms, and it has been a huge success. And uh, you can get it for nothing. Just go on to our, our uh, get to our uh, Facebook group, and you can take a peek. Get the workbook. Get the get the downloads that went with it. We're actually sharing the the actual successful strategies we're doing currently that are working for us. So That's right. Just a bunch of here's what we think you should do. Here's what we're doing that works. Why don't you take our ideas and implement them? So we're that's going to be the theme throughout the year with Cosmo, me, Matt. We're sharing with you what we're actually doing that works for us. And we want to, we want to be known as the little coaching company that is constantly giving you ideas and things to do, bite-sized pieces to work on it each week. And we'll continue to do that. I mean, we're going into well, how many years we've been doing this podcast now? Uh, we're all episode 145, so almost three years. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. So let's dive into this just quick little overview, because in our Facebook next week, I will go into demonstrating it a little bit more because it'll be, you know, a video on Facebook. But I do want to talk a little bit about what's in this workbook. Uh, Matt, can you can we bring it up? We certainly can. So if you're watching on the video on YouTube or if you're listening, you can go to YouTube. But if it's past Monday, whatever day, Monday is 7th, I think, just go to our Facebook group and you'll be able to get me uh, kind of walking through this this document. So on the podcast, I'm just going to describe what we have and what it's meant to be. And there, honestly, I don't know how many pages are in here. but we're, we're, I think it's about 26 pages. It's a long document. Whatever, we, we happen to like the number 26. Yeah, we do. It's very interesting, isn't it? The size of our workbook for the Plan, Pivot, Prosper. But what we did is I just compiled, and Matt helped me create uh, four years ago, various little things. And you just might find one or two things in here that are useful for you. So let me just describe it as, for those of you that are watching, um, there's a cover, obviously. Uh, and where is that cover, by the way? I recognize that height. This actually, yeah, and for the user that, uh, that aren't uh, actually looking at the screen, uh, we use uh, photography or photography from uh, travels, wandering uh, pictures from Wandering But Not Lost. And this particular year, we're just uh, showing different paths in national parks. So the cover of this is actually Mount Rainier in Washington State. Oh, it looked familiar. So I haven't been there. So that's on one of your recent trips. Okay. Well, I love it. I like the path. Beautiful. That's why there's, there's a path and there's, oh, there's a path. The path. describing it with some wonderful, you know, evergreen trees in the front. There you go. Do you have the visual podcast listeners? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, so yeah. Through the booklet, there's a little overview about what it is, what's included in it, a little agenda. All right. And so it starts with a year in review. Now, why, why this is not as deep as the business planning guide. This is more meant to just be high level. And honestly, we developed this so that anybody not even in real estate could use this. So it's just your numbers, you know, what was your revenue? What was your expenses? What was your pre-tax net? Where'd your business come from? And what are the takeaways? So this is meant to be sort of a, you did a deep dive in October if you're with us for business planning, but this is just a, how did I do? <clears throat> did I make, you know, where did my business come from? And what did I learn last year? Okay, that's all there is to that. Uh, continuing on with you, there's just nothing more than a blank page for brainstorming. I don't know about you, Matt, but I like to just sometimes jot down things or sure. do a mind map, a true mind map where you draw, you know, I've, I've, I've got, I was, I'm going through old stuff and everything and I've come across, oh my God, for my original coaching company idea, I found the mind map of that, you know? That's so, cool. 
you know, so you just use circles, whatever's, whatever works for you. So this is just a what's on your mind, do a brain dump, okay? Brainstorming, mind mapping. Then you've done your one-year goals if you've been tracking along with us. And so there's a longer term goal in here. And by the way, this is an editable PDF that you can just, you can print it out and write in it if you want to, but you can also map painstakingly put the editable boxes in this PDF for you. I don't know how long it took them, but I think it's a hundred and something boxes. There are 180 text boxes in here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. That's a lot of work to make it editable for you. Oh, just funny on that note, to digress for a minute. Jan goes, why don't we just make one of these? It's just not, it's just more generic and not to the year. And I said, no, we don't want to do that because if we have people that have been doing this for five years, we want their things to be unique. So every year they can go back and they have their old plan and it's got the data on it. Plus it's got actual beautiful images from all the different well, years. Well, then it was worth it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. I have the first edition with the, exactly. So there's two, five, 10 years. And I, I find that useful because that's kind of where I am in my life. It's like, where do I see myself in five years? And this yep. is just meant for you to either jot some bullets down or draw the picture of, you know, what does that look like for you? And there's just power in getting it out and putting it in, into a document. And then from the long-term goals, we move on to Okay, this is, I'm going to talk more about this in a coming podcast, and it's a call about intentions and focus. And I pulled on something that I had seen years ago. I, I like feng shui, you know, the whole uh, study of feng shui as it relates to real estate, but also feng shui in your house and how you subconsciously, you know, the, the Chinese art of feng shui, where you place things. And But when you set intention to how you do certain things, whether we're talking about doing it in your home or your desktop or your set stuff up, it's a reflection of where you are. Now, what this does is take those principles and then it ties it into nine areas of your life. So wealth, prosperity, you know, um, your reputation, it, it's fame and it's called fame in the Chinese feng shui, but it can also be legacy. So all the way through relationships, family, health, creativity. And the idea here is to just focus on it's, it can be whatever you want this to be, but I'll cover it more in detail. It can be a focus word. One thing, keep it simple, that you want to focus on in creativity or travel or career or knowledge, like self-knowledge. and Or it could be a list of one or two things that you want to do, or it could just be a, a word that is the focus for the year. But I also like the idea of, again, we'll do this in a future podcast, picking a focus word and a mantra for the year. But that's inside of this as well. And we're going to pull this out and do a separate episode on it. Okay. Now, the 333... We like the numbers threes when we created this. And these are just nine boxes for personal business and fun or travel that are just meant in 2021. What are three things personally for you? Three big things for you business wise and three things that you want to make accomplish in the not business and personal area. Right. So that could be hopefully traveling again. Um, but it could just be a hobby or something that you're going to go do for yourself. And if, if we are quarantined for a little bit, not, not necessarily quarantine, but if we are staying at home more, then maybe it's time to just flip the switch a little bit about what could you be working on that you could do in your home. Maybe there's some creative thing or something that you've been meaning to want to work on or study. That's what that, this is what this document's for, right? Uh, and then there's a piece in here for, this is just a take on the getting things done that's called the details. And this is meant like if you had a project to say you were going to reorganize your garage, okay, or do something in your home, you know, perhaps, or whatever, whatever the heck it is. So what's the goal or project? What's the deadline, budget, resources? What's your plan of action so you could kind of organize the details of what you're going to do? So it could be something like that, a home project, or it could be a, a business system or anything that you're going to do. So a real simple way. And then there's a monthly roadmap. Now, I actually love this. The first year that we designed this, it's got the months of the year uh, there. And then again, it's 333 monthly roadmap. So is there something you're going to do in January for to support you personally? That you, that's something you want to make happen. Something for your business, and then something to get you up and get out, get up and get out, or get up and stay in, but do something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. there, right. <laughs> but what I did, what this helped me do, is plan my year for when am I going to take a trip somewhere? When am I going to go visit family? Um, whether you know, you could use for anything. It's just meant to be. Look at it, and you know, you, it's a it's a smaller version of taking the annual calendar and plotting things. So this is not like details of things you're doing in your business necessarily, but it may be it may be um, something you're starting or a project or something that you're going to, like in business, it could simply be 
a focus area that you're going to do for the first quarter and then the next quarter. So it's just meant to help you with um, doing some planning. This is just all about overall planning in all of your life, all parts of your life, right? Well, this is, a, a you know, to that point, is it's a good exercise to really tell you how important business planning can be. So let's say you're in your get up and get out sec uh, section. You do have a big trip you uh, have planned, let's say, in, in the third quarter. Well, you may need to make some money in quarter one and two to be able to afford that trip in the third quarter. You know what I mean? So it can motivate you to get that done or your your uh, goal hit in uh, your business uh, side of the 333 monthly roadmap. Yeah, so, well, yeah. I like it. You could use Because you're seeing your whole year. You know, I remember the first year we did this, Jen and Brian, and, and uh, you uh, are, we were, you know, Jan and I both love national parks and we were talking about, uh, you know, where we wanted to go and blah, blah, blah. I think you had three national parks planned. That year. You had three. That's exactly the point. Thank you. I started to say that and it, you helped me come back to it. But I like what you just said. This this could be like, let's say in April, I was going to take a trip. And so in April I have, you know, Sequoia or something. And and then, you know, so to, to that point, what are business, maybe I need to put a, a dollar goal in there to, 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 to hit, this is my, you know, I want to, I want to visualize seeing 10 grand or eight grand or five grand or whatever, or it could be a project that, you know, you have to finish. So the whole point of this is that we have a tendency to, especially with everybody, everything that we're doing and I'm doing and we're coaching people. There's so many things that I start talking to somebody about. So I was just thinking of someone that um, started coaching and it's like, here's a list of all these things that we're going to work on this year. So in bit, you could use this roadmap to say in the first quarter, I'm going to focus on everything I need to do for my database because I have like five things I need to do. So that's the focus in January and February. And then then I'm going to go move on to fine tuning my listing process. So that's another example of something you could do so you could see that you're going to get to it. And on the personal side, it could be anything. It could be uh, taking time off, to, to doing something to uh, better yourself, working on a project, maybe like I just took a meditation course. I mean, I signed up for a meditation course. That's my focus for January, for the rest of December and January. So that's the kind of stuff that you put there. And then when you look back at the end of the year, you can see, did I do it? How, you know, keep this posted and it keeps you sort of on track on the, the themes or the bigger picture of the month. Right. Exactly. We are not big resolution people here at WBL no. Coaching. So this personal section here can really be the things that you can track throughout the year to that, you know, that helps your wellness over the long term. So absolutely right. Edible, right. So it's a PDF. You can go back in and do it. Now, the next two things that are in here, I really like. And one of them, I got the idea is, is something Tom Ferry, I think maybe other people have done it, too. But this is just your 30, 60, 90 days out. This is a business pipeline thing. So this is meant to just simply be I've seen people do this with sticky notes, but it's basically who are prospecting. I love this. You could print this out and post this and just simply go, what do you, what business do you have coming in the next 30 days? Like uh, people that you're working with the next 60 days and the next 90 days. And if you use sticky notes with this, you can move them around if things yeah. change, or if it's editable, you know, you can change it. And then the next one is the um, do doing done project pipeline. So there's one for business and I love this do doing done in the same idea that th these are basically things of here's your major project. So again, in your business, in your home, in your uh, personal life, these are projects that you need to do. And then you move them from the do to the doing. So you always have stuff that's on the do side. Then you move them to the doing side. That's what you're working on currently. And then you move them to the done side, the done column. Okay. So that's Very a cool. cool thing too. And then the rest of the work, the workbook is, is simply a quarterly tracking sheet. So Matt has put in quarter one, two, three, four, and inside of each quarter, there is a daily, is that the first one daily or weekly? Daily. Yeah, daily. Okay. I really designed this for me and I am going to print these out this year and use this as my diary. Okay. Yeah. So the daily roadmap, if you're listening, is got has got eight blocks on it and it starts with your morning ritual and a reflections or journaling area. So you, you write in here your morning ritual. Did you do it? You know, like whatever your two, three things that you do, if you're doing the Hal Elrod savers or you're just doing meditation and a walk or whatever, you you write down, you know what? You know what? You, you probably want to put a date on this. We should have put a date on this. Well, it's quarter. It's quarter one. But it's a daily thing. So if somebody was going to print this out, it doesn't matter. They can just if they're going to do this daily um, to keep track of it and have 30 days of these documents to, to hold on to. Uh, you would just need to, you know, mark the date that you did it. So daily ritual and then any journaling that you did that day, 
what's your focus for day? What's your daily three? Uh -huh. Any must have. So the, when it, there's a place for connections and priorities. So connections are calls, emails, meetings, and so forth. And then priorities are tasks. Now, what goes there? I don't know about you, but I always have at least 20 things on two or three pads of paper for the different yeah. areas of my life. Yeah. Um, but what I try to do, and this is where this came from, is pull three things I'm going to accomplish today. So who are three connections, emails, calls that has to happen today, at least three to five? And then the tasks that you're going to do, you, you have a task list of a million other things. So why don't you just take two or three of them and put them on today? Yeah, get her done. And then it ends with evening reflection and, and a gratitude area. Today I'm grateful for. So it's a full circle daily map. And so, and the weekly roadmap has the uh, similar idea. You can take a weekly roadmap and say, this week I'm going to get Project X done. And then what are my uh, connections and priorities? And then an area for notes. And then you use the daily ones to make it happen. And then the last page that's in the quarterly thing is a tune up, which is just brilliant. It's the, here's another alliteration. This is Boy, no kidding. Tune -up. Ponder, practice, perfect, and prosper. Um, you know what? I think that might be the name of the, the thing. I was talking about the alliterations with the R, but I believe we're going to use ponder, practice, perfect, and prosper. We seem to like our P alliterations. <laughs> this is nothing more than a quarterly check-in, you know, tune-up. Um, what, what worked? Um, how did you, once again, back to your sales, your revenue, your expenses. Are you on track? Is everything on track? Um, did you have any roadblocks, any course corrections you have to make? So it's very simple. It's not overwhelming. Um, and honestly, that's it, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll kind of demonstrate that a little bit more in our Facebook group and show you basically demonstrate it, I guess, and fill it all out. And so you, where can you get that? You can go on over to our show notes for episode 145, correct? That's correct. And then um, um, we, we created a Google uh, Drive box, basically a vault, as Matt likes to call it. And it will be sitting. Any documents that we ever have and share are going to be conveniently located in the vault in the Google Drive. And then after Monday, you'll be able to see a video of uh, kind of walking through this real quick and demonstrating how to use it. And then um, you can also download them from our Facebook group after Monday. Yeah, it's a great tool. It really is. And it's been, it's always fun for me every year to put that together, except for the 180 uh, yes, uh, text box. Well, appreciate it. We thank you. <laughs> Good stuff, Jan O'Brien. Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the light surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going back to Sequoia National Park in the beautiful Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, my sweet pea and I had reservations actually to go up prior to Thanksgiving to stay for four days. We were going to take a little trip up to the mountains where it was less crowded and we could be outside as opposed to our normal New York City trip that we take during Thanksgiving. Uh, but we decided that um, it was, I don't, we are very, we have been staying home since March, really, really and truly. And I mean, we we literally will go out maybe and get groceries if we don't order them in. We've been to a restaurant twice and sat outside. I just find it a little bit creepy, so I don't do it. So that's just my thing. But um, we decided, even because we canceled our trip to Sequoia, we got you know, we got a burr in our bonnet, right, to get up to the Sierra because we haven't been wandering for almost a year now. It's crazy for us. I'm sure, it's crazy for everybody not being able to get out and do what they usually like to do. But it's been particularly hard for me because I love and my and my sweet pea does too to get up and go, and we love Sequoia National Park because it's beautiful. Uh, undescribable unless you've actually been there and it's relatively close to Southern California. So or it's, a, it's a good uh, um, trip. We decided to make it a day trip, which very few people probably do that live in Anaheim. But so we got up at 530 in the morning, jumped in the car, got our provisions, drove up uh, the uh, Golden State Freeway to the 99 to the 178 through Visalia and then up to Sequoia National Park. It was an incredible drive. We enjoyed that. And uh, then we got up to Sequoia and it was just like, I swear, we talk about this all the time, Jen O'Brien, you, you get up into the mountains and you can just feel your whole body relaxing. 
It's like a one huge collective exhale, uh, you know, in the car. And it absolutely is incredible. You have been up to Sequoia with uh, Laura and I, and we talked about you a lot while we were up there um, because you are a tree fan. And uh, you're a tree fan, there is no better way to go, right? I might have liked it more than Yosemite, perhaps. I yeah, know. you know what? I, I really, I, I can't, I'll never say that because Yosemite really is my uh, uh, my Xanadu. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you, I love Sequoia. I feel the same way about Zion, too. Um, those parks call me. They really do. And those Sequoia trees, unbelievable. So we didn't know what to expect when we went up there because of what, you know, of what was going on. And we didn't know if there were going to be a lot of people. All of the visitor centers at the um, parks, the, the, the museum-y parts of the, muse of the uh, visitor centers are closed. The visitor centers are actually open. Uh, so you can actually go in and talk to a ranger. Now, they do just like they do at any supermarket or anything around where you live, probably. You, they only let a certain amount of people inside. You queue up outside of the visitor center, socially distanced. Everyone's wearing a mask, and you go on in, and you can shop. They have masks. Sorry. What? I just noticed. How <laughs> yeah, long have they have masks the on? Pinky and the brain have been masked up since March. They are, they don't mess around, you know. I can't believe I haven't seen that. Sorry. These guys. Sorry. So, so anyway, you can still get a little bit of the National Park experience, but I'll tell you, it was a little bit strange. We didn't know what to expect when we got up there as far as people actually being masked up. And, you know, when you're outside like that, and you, especially as if you will listen to our show, you know, you know, I always say, where the most popular places are, there's a lot of people, but get 50 feet off the, you know, out of that area and there's nobody around. So mm -hmm. uh, we just didn't know what to expect. Well, the General Sherman tree, and Jan, I'm sure you remember this. They have that big parking lot up the hill and you walk down that path down to the tree itself. And there's a lot of stairs and it's mm -hmm. it's uh, a little hard on the knees on the way down, but it makes you huff and puff on the way up. And we were even thinking before we went up there, if there's a lot of people, do we want to do that trail? Because talk about experience you know, spewing, you know, droplets <laughs> for crying out loud. If people aren't masked up. That's a little, and then, you know, it's just, it's a small trail. So if it's busy, you can't socially distance. Right. So anyway, we got up there and there were more people up there than we thought there were going to be. We were a little surprised actually. I now, that, people pardon me? feel cooped up. They want to get out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and that particular trail is the most popular one right there in, um, in Sequoia, because you get to see the General Sherman tree, which is the largest living thing on earth. Amazing. Incredible. And then there's the Congress trail there, which is one of our favorite things. Yeah, the Congress trail is fantastic. Yeah. And all of the giant forests is in this thing. Where you see the Senate and the trees. Yeah, the exactly. Tree there now. Um, so, so we got out of the car and we were walking towards the, you know, the trailhead and every single person was wearing a mask. And I just thought it was, it was so cool. It was just cool. There's a really cool sign that the National Park Service had up that had a bear on it with a mask on, and it talked about <laughs> how. And I'll, there's pictures in the show note of, of that, along with other things from our, our trip that day. But there, you know, it said, you will not be able to socially distance on this trail. It is mandatory that you wear a mask. Please take this trail at your own risk. So I thought that was kind of interesting, you know, so, you know, National Park Service taking this whole thing very, very uh, seriously. And I, I really, the whole time we were out there on that trail, we might have seen maybe one person or two people that weren't really complying, but everybody else was. And it was just, I don't know, it just felt, I, I'll tell you what it felt like. Everything you're hearing on the news and everything you see about all of the, how people are reacting to COVID, our experience up there just was not like that. And it was kind of reassuring. It's like everyone was there to enjoy the enjoy nature, but everyone was also there to, to protect themselves and people around them. And I thought that there was caring at the same time. So, and that might just be people that like nature. Maybe that's just part of their DNA. I think that's the deal. So. Yeah. Anyway, Sequoia, you know, we've done a lot of talking about Sequoia in the past, and I'll put some links to some previous uh, shows we've talked about it. We've done Wintertime in Sequoia. Great uh, notes from when Jan and uh, uh, Sweet Pea and I went up there. Great pictures from that trip, which was fantastic. It's so interesting to go to these places during different times of the year. They had a snowfall up there about three weeks ago, and um, a lot of the things had closed. I don't think they knew exactly what was going to happen with the weather, but everything had kind of opened back up again. By the, I mean, as far as the roads and everything uh, when we were there. But that snowpack and it getting colder at night has really changed the the look and feel of the, the park. You would, of course, you'd recognize it, Jan, but, but when we were there, uh, in the summertime, it was so green and all the ferns, and wildflowers and everything. I mean, it just almost hurt your eyes. It was so beautiful, right? So stunning. Now it's a little bit more 
now it's it's not even like uh, brown. It is. It looks like it has been in in the frost, right? It's it has already had a snow covering, right? So it's all very brown. No matter what you juxtapose next to the beautiful color of those sequoia trees, it, those yeah, trees gorgeous. still stand out like, oh my lord, unbelievable! How so, long did you stay there? I mean, it's a good. That was a good what four or five hour drive. Yeah, it was about four hour drive for us uh, from where we live. Uh, maybe a little bit more. We, you know, we stopped a couple times on the way up, you know, just to use the restroom and stuff like that. We had all of our provisions that we were going to use in a backpack, not to leave in the car because. There's bears up there. You can't leave stuff in your car. So um, we put on our backpack, packed a little lunch. We ate out in the giant forest, which was awesome. Uh, we got up to Sequoia about 1030. Nice. And we figured that we wanted to leave around three because we didn't wow. want to be driving down that hill. Yeah. In, you know, and when it gets dusk, because I hate driving in dusk anyway, because it's a horrible time to see. Yeah. Uh, so we actually ended up leaving about 330. So we were up there for That's what? Five, five hours. To hang out and hike and do oh. that. It was a fun, but you guys like the drive, so the drive was part of the journey. It wasn't that like, exactly. you know, we have a four and four hour, eight hour drive around. The drive is always a part of our journey, so you're at, you're absolutely right there. So yeah, so we had a great full day. So we were up in the 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 sequoias for about five hours. Had a wonderful drive home. Visalia is a great little town there, right on the ninety nine. Uh, they they deck the halls at Christmas time uh, with old fashioned kind of small right. town Christmas decorations. And they, it's not like there's three garlands. No, their main street is called Candy Cane Lane, and the whole thing is just uh, um, just you know garland after garlands. It's awesome. And so we always love to drive through there. Well, we got down there at five o'clock, and the lights go on at five thirty. Oh, yeah. So we went over, we thought, let's get an In-N-Out burger. So we went over to In-N-Out, which took about 20 minutes because you know how the line at In-N-Out mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got our food, we had our little drive through meal driving down Candy Cane Lane in Visalia. So it was an awesome little experience. Got on the 99. We got home about 9 o'clock. So it was a uh, wonderful mm -hmm. day trip to uh, the National Park. I it, could talk about rejuvenating you and making you feel like literally when we got up the next day and yes, the days passed closer to Thanksgiving, we were like, God, it felt like, you know, th that we were there more than just five hours, you know? So just a little bit of wandering can go a long, long way. Wow. So, yeah. And honestly, I have to just point out again, if you're listening, you're going to have to go to the uh, video to be able to see this over on YouTube, but Matt, I can see some of your decorations. So I'm going to point out <laughs> I love the Santa up on the wall. I don't know what that Santa. Um, it's Santa's. It's a Santa's village pennant. A pennant. Okay, I love that. And then, of course, I can see my favorite thing, which is the Rudolph Villa, Rudolph characters over here. Okay, so I can see uh, yeah. Island of Mr. Charlie Island. in the box. I see Charlie. I see Yukon the, Cornelius. Yukon and um, Den the um, Dennis. Right? Isn't he Hermie? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's his name? Herm Hermie. Hermie. Yep. Hermie, mm -hmm. the dentist, yes, the dentist elf. Okay, so. anyway, just wonderful. <laughs> uh, and that's just like one, oh, and there's a couple other things up there. And this is just in one little tiny square of your office. So yeah. I can imagine what the rest of your house is. Hey, you know, we're, we're decked, our halls are decked this year. So good job. Makes a smile. Anyway, people, you know, as always, you need to get up and get out. You can do it. You know, I, as it turned out, it's a good thing we canceled our reservation because the Waxachi closed uh, uh, because of the uh, rise in COVID cases. Mm -hmm. Our reservation would have been canceled anyway. Uh, so it was better that we did it as opposed to getting that message saying, hey, you're not coming up. You know, that would have been kind of a bummer. So uh, if you have reservations up there uh, in any of the national parks, you should definitely stay on it, keep calling, and think because things are changing on a daily and weekly basis, especially since things have gotten so crazy right now with COVID. So anyway, guys, get up, get out, and uh, it, it will be able to do it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The COVID edition of getting up and getting out. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, everybody, that is a wrap for episode 145 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, I love my path. It is a, uh, a great tool to really, like we had talked about during the presentation, to kind of blend your personal and your uh, your 
your your activities in life into your business so you actually have a plan for that hey before i go any farther don't forget people it's holiday shopping time we are our wandering wear makes beautiful stocking stuffers so if you're looking for that little unique gift go over to wandering for forward slash store and pick up a stocking stuffer today so what else jana brand uh no that's it i love the i love that i while you were talking about sequoia i was visualized like literally seeing myself standing in front of sherman general sherman tree and that congress trail path and all those cool places went to because i was just in awe i was like a kid in a candy store walking around going i practically wanted to hug all the trees or lay down and just like be in awe of them because it was such an amazing trip so you did you were like a kid in a candy shop mm -hmm. it was really fun to it was fun to watch you in yosemite too but it was really fun to watch you around those sequoia trees because you are a tree fan laura's the same way i can't it's like i would be walking along and be like where's sweet pea oh hugging a tree <laughs> i mean seriously <laughs> but those are the trees there's just nothing like it and i can't wait to get back to that so that yeah. has to happen i'll have to get myself back there maybe it's something for 2021 on on the trip but i don't know but it's going to happen in my lifetime again and jenna brian you, you, we need to make sure that when you plan your next visit out to california we do that or something when you come out here because you're yeah. you're a month away from moving away i know so i'll be an east coaster uh, making trips back to the west coast as as necessary for business and pleasure so uh, absolutely and you already have the wink weather app so you're good with your weather forecasting <laughs> I monitor it from here. So. I can't ever, I, you know, I'll never get enough of the Wink weather app. That's all there is to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have wink, and you don't have to be in Florida to use it. You can fly to the area of the country. Oh, no. wink, hey, wink, wink was all over telling me that we were going to have very dangerous winds the last couple of days. And sure enough, What's they the update were on that? The fire's still bad? I mean, you have some more, you have the Santa Ana's. And you, can you know, thankfully, the winds were supposed to go through Saturday and they died down yesterday afternoon. So that is a huge thing for the firefighters. It gives everyone an ability to kind of exhale a little bit here uh, because the wind is what really causes the virus to spread. Now, not easy, still not easy to get these these uh, wildfires out, but at least they're not rampantly spreading all over the place. That, that that bonfire that was down there near Irvine again was another nasty, nasty fire. So, I you know the, you know first responders uh, during COVID, uh, I can't even tell you for fire responders at any time, especially during COVID, uh, unbelievably uh, heroic people. Yeah. So you, you just said something, I don't know if you meant both of it, the winds move the virus around the fire. I, yeah, I have a virus. I mean, seriously, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. The wind. Yeah, I'll tell you, the other night, I usually don't walk when it's windy, but I just, I, I feel like I've been up. Right? Out. So uh, when I walk around my neighborhood, I always take my mask, but I don't always wear my mask mm -hmm. because not really, I mean, there's not a lot, ton of people around. But during that uh, win the other night, I wore my mask the entire time for a couple of reasons. One, because he said no, but also because the smoke was so it's bad. Smoky, sure. It wasn't smoky, but there was a smell of smoke in the air. Yeah. So, you know, I was wearing my mask for that. Oh, we just can't take too much more. Please, let's just get, let's get through this year. Well, frankly, we're just going well, good sign. Though, you know, the vaccine is, you know, there's it's premiering in over in England this week, and uh, you know it's uh, going to be headed our way soon. So, you know, by by next summer, I'm feeling like we're going to be in a good place. There's light at the end of the tunnel, right? And there is. Learn how to adjust and adapt. And again, that, we're going to talk about it in one of the episodes coming up about you know the innovation, the things that have happened, the things that come out of it. This is what we do. This is history. We're we're living history. Years from now, we'll go back. Wow, that pandemic of 2020 that infected the entire globe. What came of it? You know, yes, yes, yes destruction. You know, adjustments, attitudes. But from it, only t history will tell if we learn and we move on. You know, so hopefully, that's right. We know how to adjust to these things. But I just think that there are little things that have happened that that are positive. That uh, businesses that have there's businesses that have fallen while there has new businesses have arisen that's and true that is the beautiful part about human beings and our spirit of what we are as americans is like okay figure out what you're going to do next how do you reinvent yourself that's right so anyway that's stuff we'll be talking about all month here on the podcast we'll see you next week yeah good stuff i'm going to leave you with an african proverb and it goes right along with everything we're talking about here however long the night the dawn will break okay. right so remember everyone, get up, get out, mask up, be safe, stay inside, all that other jazz, and be forever wandering, but not.